D, wait for it. Wait for it. You got the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? Um, so before uh, we get started, I just want to say that if you like what we do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, uh, please consider subscribing to our channels. Uh, you know, uh, YouTube is always changing up their algorithms and small channels like ours usually get pushed to the back of the line. So uh, we both ask that you please like, share, and subscribe, and we thank you in advance. Um, I'm MattCat83 from Geek What, and this is a Speed Force Spectre. Go ahead and take it away. Hello, hi, I'm Speed Force Spectre. I talk about DreamWorks Trolls and whatever I feel like that time of day or week. Um, so I've been pondering this video for a while, mostly because the Paw Patrol movie trailer dropped during the KCAs recently. And I was thinking about how, like I could tell that people my age uh, who don't have kids, they're kind of worried about it, mostly because they're not used to it and given how they react to pg or g uh animated movies that release in theaters they typically go oh this would be better on television or um they'll blame the kids for viewing it and then pinpoint the parents as well and it's just it's a messy conversation when you're not a parent so i decided to bring matt along to talk about these movies in a parent versus i don't have a parent perspective right on yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I am a parent. I have two kids. I have a daughter that is five and then a son that is three. And they love Paw Patrol, I'll tell you that. And that's right up their age range. So we, we got perfect ages right there for this conversation. Right on, yeah, yeah. In fact, the other two movies that you wanted to talk about, um, I'm interested into seeing like maybe what they'll think about those. So Paw Patrol um, is an animated movie based off of the... Uh, TV show, and uh, it has a release date of August 20th, 2001, and it's being directed by uh, Cal Brucker, Brunker, I think that's how you say his name. So. Um, it stars sure. uh, people such as uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Randall Park, Dak Shepard, Kim Kardashian, so crazy, and Tyler Perry. Um, and uh, the plot of it is, the plot synopsis is, Ryder and the pups are called to Adventure City to stop Mayor Humdinger from turning the bustling metropolis into a state of chaos. Get ready for exciting missions, high-stake rescues, and new pups, and amazing new vehicles making this the biggest Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol story ever. No city is too big, no pup is too small. And I think this sounds uh, quite exciting as far as uh, 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 Paw Patrol goes and everything. So altogether, I'm just kind of shocked this is going to theaters. And then you throw on top of that the celebrity voice choices i think they're a bit odd given the fact that you know i'm pretty sure three-year-olds hop over to disney channel when disney jr's over and i'm pretty sure they know half the youngins on there so the, i think that if they heard that name they'd be a little bit more hype for it but I, I don't know how how little ones work in terms of voice casting things for celebrities uh but i thought that was a bit weird interesting too um, I don't know if I'm seeing this in theaters, but as you said, that's a good pinpoint uh, date that they have. August, I forgot the day. August 20th. Yeah, it's about the time kids aren't quite in school yet, so it has time to make whatever numbers it possibly can. Right on. Yeah, no, um, I, my kids, they could care less who does the voice acting. Um, so I, and plus I don't think that, uh, kids that are interested in Paw Patrol, uh, do care about the, who the voice acting is. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're just like, you know, like my daughter, you know, she doesn't care who does the voice of Elsa. She just loves Elsa. So, right. um, yeah. So I think that is interesting, especially like, I love how they got Kim Kardashian, Gosh, I hope every sentence that she has in the movie starts with a K. That'd be really fun. <laughs> so, um, did you have any questions about this movie? Yes. So, my first question, and then it's a follow-up question, so you could reply to both. My first question is, how do you feel about this movie as a parent and who enjoys Paw Patrol? And do you feel like, in terms of a parent and having your two kids, do you think that this is appropriate for an animated movie going to cinema? And then my second question is, as a person who just does discussion and review topics, removing the parent aspect and you're just doing this, do you think it's appropriate? The Okay, so the parent one, 
Um, going to the theaters, I think, is just a cash grab for the studio, and I totally get that and everything. Um, and my kids are young enough to where they will love this so much. They will love the Paw Patrol movie. I know they will because they love Paw Patrol. And I like Paw Patrol too. It's 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 pretty fun. Um, but I don't know if I would take them to see it because uh, when we go to the movie theater, it's quite an expense uh, to, to take uh, four people to the movie theater. And I don't know how you are when you go to the movie theater, but we go all out. So it's like, I spend like a minimum of $50, like a minimum, but there it's way more than that. So um, going to the theater, I don't know if it was the right choice, just in the sense that um, um, I personally won't probably take my kids to the movie theater um, uh, to see this, but I think it was being put on by Paramount. So I don't understand why they wouldn't just put that day and date because if they put this on Paramount Plus, I don't have Paramount Plus, but it might entice me to get a, a that subscription to that streaming service. That's a good um, point. And then my second question was, um, do you feel like this is acceptable in terms of a discussion review person removing the uh, adult or the parent aspect from it? Honestly, no. Um, if if I didn't have kids, <laughs> I would not care about Paw Patrol whatsoever. Like uh, this wouldn't be a part of my life, and I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't watch it just to like review it or talk to people. It's not that I don't like animation or whatnot, but it's just that I just this is too this skews too young for me personally. So um, now you, uh, as you as not being a parent, how do you feel about that? Same thing, but reverse. Okay, so I have no experience with Paw Patrol at all whatsoever. I did mm. check out a few clips before we did this video. Um, I have a good general idea. Plus there was a Japanese trailer that dropped this week. It feels very different from the show and it, because it's theatrical, it has a higher budget put into it. And I think it looks nice for what it's trying to do, but at the same time, I don't know how the plot structure is going to turn out. Right on. Yeah, and, I did have, go ahead, oh, sorry. And another thing is, this isn't like, say, nine-year-old to up movie, which that's about Disney, Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks range, something like Home or Trolls even, to some extent. Um, but this isn't like a Spongebob movie where, you know, you're going to enjoy it. A kid's going to enjoy it. It's going to be a fun experience. This is just a gigantic question mark given the age range. Right. And that's not a bad thing inherently because movies like this have come out before. And two examples are uh, Sesame Street's Catch That Bird. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Elmo and Grouchland went to theaters, but it felt like a theatrical film. And throughout the 2010s, they've been figuring out how to do a Sesame Street movie for a modern audience. And they've been struggling to do it. I don't know if that's going to be HBO Max now, or they just completely dropped the project altogether. But I, I was watching Catch That Bird because I have more experience with Elmo and Grouch Land as a child. And watching it as an adult, I was like, yeah, this feels like Sesame Street. But at the same time, would someone like me who doesn't you know, catch up with Sesame Street just out of interest and curiosity, would that fly with them? Right on. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Did you like that Sesame Street Catch That Bird movie? I thought it was really cute. I did too. I watched it with my kids. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That sounds that sounds like uh that sounds pretty good as far as uh um what they're trying to do. Who's your favorite Paw Patrol uh pup? Just Sky, just because I like the pink aesthetic on the character. Right on. That's my daughter's favorite too. She likes Everest too, but uh, yeah. Uh, I like uh, Rocky. I like it because he's all environmental and everything. Did you want to talk about the Hello Kitty now? Yes. Yeah, so I don't know too much information, uh, mostly because uh, I thought we'd be a little prepared for the video, um, but it's a live action movie. So it's like a CGI Hello Kitty and other Sanrio characters, and then a human. And on pen and paper and even outside the pen and paper, I think that's a good idea. Mostly because Hello Kitty be can be thrown into literally anything. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been thrown into Sonic. She's been into an action anime to do a cross promotion. She's done a lot. And on YouTube, um, Hello Kitty's Cute Adventures, I think what it's called, that's really good. It's, it's really cute, really wholesome. And at the same time, I think that kind of doing a Sonic type of 
human bestie thing could work out. And it, to an extent, Sanrio is kind of like um, Winnie the Pooh almost. So I think mm-hmm. it might have like Christopher Robin vibes to it. So I think it's on the right track. It's just the age range. Right on. I I, I think that that sounds that sounds good. Um, I um, I would liken it to Chom and Jerry. Um, what you just said, if it's uh, because I I'm reading right here, it says it's an animated mixture of uh live action and animated, and um. Well, I don't. I didn't like Tom and Jerry, but at the same time, I go. Uh, I would watch a Hello Kitty movie. I, I mean, I personally have never been into Hello Kitty. Um, I don't like dislike it or anything. It just never yeah. came up or whatnot. But I can tell you right now, um, my daughter, who is very much a girly girl, uh, would love Hello Kitty. Um, <clears throat> so I think that that is something that uh, is interesting. And you brought up a good point about the whole girly girl thing. Is it's not 100% that there's right a group of diverse characters. So it's kind of like trolls where it's like, oh, okay, here's the girl character. Here's branch. Here you go, boys. You're, you're included as well. Oh, right so I, I feel like it'll work in its favor, but like also San Rio is kind of like, as I said, Winnie the Pooh and that's kind of universal despite the lower age range. Right on. I think this will do really good over uh, overseas, like in Japan, because they love Hello Kitty. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. And then the last movie that we want to talk about is um, the Barney the Dinosaur movie. Um, So I was looking uh, this up and it sounds very interesting just in this. I don't know if you, um, sorry, if you grew up with Barney at all. Did you grow up with Barney at all? I did grow up with Barney. I was a huge fan. I was more of a Blue's Clues fan, but Barney was definitely second up there because like me personally like i was when barney came out uh like i was a little too old for it so i wasn't like into barney but um like i had a nephew that loved barney and everything and so uh i was just like you know hey whatever i can dig barney it's it's not that big a deal um how do you feel right now just at the announcement that they're gonna do a, a live action barney the dinosaur movie so i was excited because i felt like Mattel announced last summer that they're rebranding the brand because Barney has only been in reruns. He hasn't had any new content recently. So this is a complete reboot. So the 180. And I was like, okay, this is a good idea right now. On top of that, if it takes inspiration from Catch That Bird or Elmo and Grouchland or something akin to, um, I can't think of any shows right now. Um, But if it's something along those lines where the whole family can enjoy i think it's on the right track if it doesn't how should i say this if it it's more about plot and less about the side stuff they normally do right on yeah um yeah no um how do you feel about daniel kalua because he is the executive producer on this how do you feel about him being involved with this movie I've never seen his work at all, so I can't really comment on that one. Oh, gotcha. Oh, you didn't see Get Out? I didn't. Oh, you should. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. Well, with this movie being a live action movie, do you uh, think that they'll use the original costumes from the the original show? Or do you think they'll do more of like a CGI kind of like, uh, kind of like Cats, but not as bad as Cats, but kind of like Cats where uh, it's more realistic? I'm not sure if it's the original puppeteer, but uh, he makes TikTok videos using Barney. He still has the costume oh, sure. around. I didn't know um, so I feel like they could easily use that one or they could update the puppet. There's two options with that one. CGI, I don't think that would work in this movie's favor, mostly because of the head design and mm-hmm. the eye design. I don't think that'll translate perfectly in CGI. Right on. Um, now, do you think children of today like will like Barney or like relate at all? Now, that's an interesting question, and it really depends on the parents' knowledge and how old they are. So, like for me, um, Barney was still around and even had new episodes on PBS Kids, so I would watch that. On top of that, we talked about Sesame Street, so my parents knew enough about preschool programming, and I'm saying I'm sure you're the same way with your kids because you guys watch Paw Patrol, so. You pretty much monitor what your kids watch in terms of that age range. 
and it kind of depends on what the kids are watching nowadays because there are shows like Barney still on streaming services and a few network television shows but it it really depends right on yeah I don't like my kids have never seen Barney so I don't, I'm not 100% sure I mean I'm pretty sure they'd like it because they'll watch anything but uh yeah I'm not sure yeah maybe I should try that tomorrow but I'll just put on a Barney or whatnot okay so Daniel Kalua. Um, has been describing the, it as Barney was an ambiguous uh, figure in many of our childhoods. Then he disappeared into the shadows, left misunderstood. With that, do you think that this will skew older rather than younger? Now, this is where my problem comes into play. Mm -hmm. what, what I was hoping for this movie to do is to embrace what it is, but definitely fix the problem the old show did have because there are people today who definitely say the whole uh shadow thing because people will say oh sesame street's a bit better than barney or those type of debates and i feel like if mattel and whoever's working on it make sure that kids can understand and make barney relatable in terms of this very adult very if you grew up in 1999 like myself you would enjoy this, but they would have to try really hard with this one. And that's why I'm a little worried about the execution on this part of the, um, the idea. Right on. I agree. Like, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see that because like, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's so, yeah. Like, and, and if because... they did skew to go to an older audience, I think for someone like myself, like if, if Barney's talking about stuff that i'm all like mm, i think that's a little bit too you know uh i don't think they would go that far i think the no. self-awareness no i think the self-awareness would be more of oh you don't like the i love you song and then someone will kind of do a deep dive of why that song doesn't work or other things of like episodes why things didn't work out the way that it would be more um appropriate i guess Right on. Um, that's a great segue. Speaking of the I Love You, um, do you think that this song will uh, be in the movie? I have a feeling it will. Maybe they'll update it a bit. Uh, right but we'll see where that one goes. But I right think on. the... And going back to the last thing we talked about, for because recently the Door of the Explorer movie came out. Now, I have not seen that movie yet. But that movie is riddled with self-awareness about the Dora brand. And on surface level, that might not sound like Dora, but it's under the Nickelodeon's movie title. And this feels right up Nickelodeon and Dora's alley to do this type of thing. But with Barney, he doesn't have that type of energy to really do that in terms of his past. Right on. And one that. thing that I definitely fear, and as I said, I th this is just my opinion the adults who are like my age or a bit older they fear younger age content and this is a bit of a weird territory as i said it's not like say ugly dolls where it's like a pg type of thing but you tell mm -hmm. who the audience is but it works for you as an adult and i feel like they're too worried about this type of audience and whether or not it's animated or live action this is kind of scary Mostly because something like Oogie Loves, I don't know if you remember that movie. I do not. Okay, so Oogie Loves completely bombed on the box office because no one knew what it was. Mm -hmm. The branding wasn't anywhere in the U.S. And it completely flopped because it was a product no one knew about in the States. And it was a movie for little, little ones. And the writing was not good. And I think that's why a lot of people are worried is if the writing is not good, and if it doesn't have, say, a level of self-awareness, and one of my more recent problems with uh, reviewers or people on Twitter.com, for example, they'll look at Lego Movie for its surface value, and the surface value is self-awareness and adult humor jokes. And as years went on, that was the narrative. They didn't go into the nook and crannies of everything. And so it felt like something like Trolls had to work to be self-aware and realize, oh, this is kind of stupid. Pop music is kind of stupid. Do everything is awesome, kind of like that. Be self-aware. And it does have me a little bit worried for these type of films going into cinemas and adults aren't used to watching, say, like an episode of Curious George randomly. Right on. Do you think that his um, his other friends, uh, uh, DJ and uh, uh, 
what was her name? Bop or whatever? Baby Bop. Baby Bop. You think they'll make an appearance in the first uh, movie? That's an interesting question, mostly because they added a new character in the 2000s that I remember called Riff. And I'm not not entirely... After after me. And I'm not entirely sure how they would incorporate those characters, mostly because they were kid characters. They weren't like Barney, where you could easily kind of do a little deep dive commentary with. So that's going to be a little bit hard for them, I feel like. But we'll see what happens and how they present this. Do you think it could be like one of those things like uh, they did with Sonic where Tails showed up at the end? Maybe the other dinosaurs could show up at the end in the like end credit scene. As I said before, for something like Sonic and even Hello Kitty to an extent, that's more for like an eight and older, but like older people can enjoy it too. Barney's in a awkward position it's like okay i like this for my kid um this doesn't work for me or it does work for me so i don't know if fan service like that would i don't know how many people would enjoy it i know i personally would but i don't know for others right on right on well um was there anything else you wanted to say about these movies no that was about it right on yeah no i thought this was really good uh i like um i like having a a different perspective on on certain movies especially animated movies that are coming out because uh like i said before when it comes to my kids like we don't always take them to every single movie that comes out animated movie that comes out so i have to because it is expensive so we have to pick and choose you know what movies would come out um for instance we went and seen frozen 2 and then we had to wait a little bit longer because the next one was uh trolls world tour we were gonna go see that in the movie oh well lucky yeah, and then and then you know that got messed up because then we just had to buy it on online when it uh, right. dropped because they got. I, I was crazy. I bought uh, I bought these little these little headbands that had like the trolls puffy things. I was like, yeah, we're oh. gonna wear these. It's gonna be awesome. And then it got all <laughs> ruined. So, um, but yeah, I'm sorry I told you that it was, it was no, totally that was off, fun. off key. But uh, yeah, so no, this was really great. I enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I hope to do it again about movies like this that are coming out. Yeah, um, I know it, we're definitely going to do it later for My Little Pony Generation 5. Oh, absolutely. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us, how do you guys feel about all of this? How do you feel about the three movies that we talked about? How do you feel about the Paw Patrol movie? How do you feel about the Hello Kitty movie? And how do you feel about the Barney the Dinosaur movie? Um, which one of those are you most excited or, uh, about? Uh, which ones are you least interested in? Or are you just interested in all of them? Um, you know, um, and then, uh, you know, you can go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button you know i won't mind a specter won't mind either um uh, again go ahead and check specter's channel out uh, keep going to my channel uh checking out my channel i would appreciate that also and we will see you guys next time on our video you guys have a good day bye